This question appeared in NEET PG 2023 and the question talks about a 4 year old child with easy fatigability. The mother also complained that the child was more hungry between the meals and the child recovers after food. A liver examination shows no glycogen, so what is the most probable diagnosis? And your options are A. Branching enzyme deficiency B. Hormone sensitive lipase deficiency D. Uh, C. Debranching enzyme deficiency and the last option D is glycogen synthase deficiency. Now this is a very very high topic and you have to understand all the steps of glycogen synthesis, breakdown and all the glycogen storage disorders. I will try to cover the most important points in this particular video but if you want to learn completely about glycogen synthesis and glycogen you know uh, synthesis disorders then there both the videos link will be there in the description you can just go and have a look at it. Hello students thank you so much for clicking to watch the explanation of this video. I'll take some 10-15 seconds to uh, give a very very important announcement. I have just published a book uh, which has NEET PG 2018 to 2023 all the questions and uh, this book was much requested by all of you for a very long time so I have just finished it. It is available both on Amazon as well as it is available on Medico App Store. Now one additional benefit I can offer you if you buy it from Medico App Store is that not only you will get the book but you know that we have a NEET PG previous year QBank in app form. Okay, and in app form, the question papers are from 2012 to 2023. So almost 11, 12 years question paper is there. In the printed form, it is 2018 to 2023. So if you order it from our medical app store, the link is there in the description. You will get the app full year access with all the question bank 2012 to 2023 as well as the book. So please do go buy it from Amazon. And if you're buying from Amazon, please leave a review. And if you want to buy it from a Play Store, uh, from our Medico Apps App Store, then you can just click on the link and you will find the description of that particular uh, book. Now let's look at this particular image so that you have a clarity as to uh, the steps of glycogen synthesis as well as breakdown. So we know that with blood 2 receptors or transporters, we have glucose coming in the cell. And this glucose is first converted to glucose 6 phosphate, converted to glucose 1 phosphate, then UDP glucose and with the help of glycogen synthase and branching enzyme it is converted to glycogen. So this is the step which it takes to form the glycogen. The reversal is the breakdown. So glycogen with the help of enzyme glycogen phosphorylase is bro broken down into glucose 1 phosphate, converted to glucose 6 phosphate, converted to glucose and finally into blood uh, with via blood 2 receptors transporters they can be brought out. So this is overall glycogen synthesis and breakdown in the very very diagrammatic representation. Now let's look at what are the deficiencies of the enzyme and what kind of disease they will lead to. So the first deficiency is when this conversion of glucose 6 phosphate is converted to glucose that step is inhibited. We know here the enzyme is glucose 6 phosphatase. Okay. So there are two diseases which can happen here. One is 1A von Gerke's disease where the enzyme itself is deficient that is glucose 6-phosphatase is deficient and one is this enzyme is specifically present in your endoplasmic reticulum. So what happens the enzyme is present but the receptor which will move it the enzyme that will move the glucose 6-phosphate inside the endoplasmic reticulum to get converted into glucose that is absent that enzyme endoplasmic reticulase glucose 6 translocase that translocase will move the glucose 6 phosphate from the cytoplasm into the endoplasmic reticulum so what if that is deficient so both of these will have very very similar symptoms okay and because this glucose 6 phosphate is not converted into glucose so what is going to happen now here imagine all the extra glucose is being converted into glycogen but the breakdown of glycogen is inhibited. Understood? So you will have progressive deposit of glycogen, normal glycogen in your liver. Very, very important. First, the glycogen which is deposited in both von Gerke's disease as well as in ER uh, endoplasmic reticulum glucose 6 translocase deficiency is there is a normal glycogen, increased deposit of normal glycogen in the liver. And it is not because there is an increased deposit, but there is a decreased breakdown because of this particular enzyme. So that is the first thing you have to remember. Second, very, very critical thing is, now you have to use a little biochemistry knowledge. This step, the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to glucose is the common step 
between both glycogen breakdown and gluconeogenesis. So imagine between the meals when the child has, so child cannot get uh, you know glucose from glycogen breakdown and the child cannot even create new glucose, gluconeogenesis also it cannot do. So there is severe hypoglycemia in these patients and all the symptoms of severe hypoglycemia both acute as well as chronic symptoms will be there. Okay. So two very very salient points which I am going to tell you and you have to remember for this disease on which every time question has been asked one number, number one increased normal glycogen being stored in the liver number one number two severe hypoglycemia okay so this is type one glycogen storage disorder type two is called as pompous disease and here the enzyme which is deficient is acic maltase now what happens you know glycogen breakdown has two pathways one is this pathway which i discussed glycogen to glucose one phosphate to glucose six phosphate and further down and one is glycogen with the help of this enzyme acid maltase getting directly converted to glucose okay so this is more you know important in uh, infants and neonates okay what if this enzyme is deficient so throughout the body the cells will be loaded with glycogen throughout the body the cells will be and this enzyme is present in lysosome so it has a lot of features similar to lysosomal disorder, storage disorders the only thing is this child will have you know uh, they will generally die by two years of age because of the cardiac uh, you know enlargement okay cardiac enlargement so generally they will have uh, increased deposit of uh, glycogen throughout the body now remember when we talk about glycogen storage disorder we also talk about uh, generalized glycogen storage disorder uh, glycogen storage disorder which are hepatic type and muscle type so first one we talked was hepatic type this is a generalized glycogen storage disorder because this AC maltase is present, present in all the cells okay so this is type 2 type 2 only two things you have to remember number one uh, this is uh, generally having all the symptoms of a lysosomal storage disorder because AC maltase is present in uh, lysosome okay it's a generalized glycogen storage disorder and the second most point important point is most of these children will die by the age of two because of cardiac failure only two points you have to remember and you are done with that Let's look at the next disease. This is called as Forbes or Cori's disease. And here the debranching enzyme is deficient. So what is happening? Your glycogen formation is normal. But at the time of breaking of the glycogen, breakdown of the glycogen, the debranching does not happen. So this will have highly branched glycogen stored in the liver. So the breakdown can never be hap happening complete breakdown of glycogen will not happen some amount of glycogen because the debranching enzyme is absent so there will be deposit of highly branched glycogen in the liver of this patient okay will how how about the hypoglycemia so hypoglycemia may happen but not very severe okay so this again is a hepatic type and this is also here what we call as limit dextrins highly branched glycogen will be stored in this so two points again for Forbes or Corey's disease. Number one, highly branched glycogen called as limit dextrin is stored in increased quantity. So hepatomegaly will be there and very, you know, mild hypoglycemia will be seen. Let's look at the next disease that is called as Anderson's, okay, type four, Anderson's disease. Now in Anderson's disease, branching enzyme is deficient. So what you are going to have is very long glycogen, abnormal glycogen. So both of these have abnormal glycogen, remember very long uh, you know uh, glycogen chains are there okay so there are two problems with this very long glycogen so some amount of hypoglycemia will be there hepatomegaly will be there but the more important point is this long branched glycogen uh, you know uh, create autoimmunity so these patients will have cirrhosis related to the autoimmunity because of the abnormal structure of the glycogen very very important so autoimmune related cirrhosis of liver will be seen in branching enzyme patients or Anderson's. Okay, right. Now let's move to the next. The next is MAC Ardell's. Okay, now this glycogen phosphorylase, this enzyme, if it is deficient in muscle, this is called as MAC Ardell's disorder. And what is MAC Ardell's disorder? Here the muscle phosphorylase is absent. So whenever the pa uh, patient uh, you know, do some muscular activity, he'll feel easy fatigability, easy fatigability. Will there be a hypoglycemia? No, because the liver, uh, you know, glycogen phosphorylase is normal. So this is a type of muscle 
uh, glycogenous storage disorder or muscular glycogenous storage disorder that is mac adults remember very classical symptom that if he does some work he will have he will have pain cramps you know and anything related if he continue doing work then the, even there will be muscle breakdown myoglobinuria and all that let's look at the next what happens if liver glycogen phosphorylase is absent so here this disease is called as hers disease and it is a partial deficiency always, always. so what is going to happen the patient will have hypoglycemia and increased amount of normal glycogen deposit so that is hers disease again it is a type of hepatic glycogen storage disorder the last two disorder type 7 and type 8 you just need to know the name so type 8 is basically the receptor disorder transporter disorder that is called as Fanconi Bickett syndrome so in this uh, there will be widespread disorder because the blood 2 transporter itself is absent type 7 that is called as Torres disorder and here phosphofructokinase deficiency is absent in muscles so the patient will say that normally if he is able to you know uh, do work he is normal he does not have any complaint but when he tries to work after eating the food then he will have muscle cramps very interesting that the muscle cramps happen only when he does wants to do exercise after eating the food and why it is this because what is the function of phosphofructokinase it will convert glucose 6 phosphate into fructose 6 phosphate if this is not there after a meal what is going to happen there will be increased amount of glucose 6 phosphate and increased amount of glucose 6 phosphate will be leading to increased production of glucose uh, glycogen rather than you know uh, breakdown of glycogen so what is happening immediately after a meal there will be increased production of glycogen so when the person is trying to work out he will not be able to break down that glycogen to generate energy so that is why very very interesting symptom will be that the person will say that after meal whenever he is trying to do workout or you know he will have muscle cramps after meal okay and whereas in your uh, uh, Mac Adams disease anytime he is able to do work he will have symptoms so this is just a small summary as I can say of all the glycogen storage disorder this diagram is very very important and if you remember this diagram this flowchart you will be able to cover all the uh, important glycogen storage disorders so let's look at the question a four-year-old child so we know that branching enzyme deficiency will present with hypoglycemia and because branching enzyme is not there so you will have long chain glycogen so this will cause autoimmunity and cirrhosis and generally this happens in 30 40 50 not so early hormone sensitive lipase if that is deficient what is going to happen what is the function of hormone sensitive lipase hormone sensitive lipase actually is very very crucial you know fat is deposited in the liver and peripheral tissue whenever the blood glucose level falls down this fat has to be broken down to generate energy if and that is the function of hormone sensitive lipase if that is deficient what is going to happen the fat which is deposited will not be broken down and that is why you know one of the common thing is fatty liver you know fatty liver grade 3 grade 4 very uh, early fatty liver is seen if you have hormone sensitive lipase deficiency debranching enzyme again a little amount of uh, you know hypoglycemia but you will have abnormal uh, you know glycogen that is limited extremes being deposited glycogen synthase deficiency now this is also called as type zero glycogen storage disorders because if glycogen synthase is absent no amount of glycogen will be formed so if you see here no glycogen in the liver and it will have because the person does not have glycogen okay so once the glucose level starts falling down the immediate source of glucose will be glycogen only okay and that is not there that is why the child is having very easy fatigability and between the meals he's you know crying a lot and once you give a food his um, glucose are like so that is glycogen synthase deficiency the correct answer here is 